My name is Dmitry. Uh, the first uh, question maybe is not expected. Uh, like, who of you swam in the sea today in the morning? Yeah, I did also. That is amazing. Yesterday, I didn't do that because I was lazy, wanted to sleep more. But my colleagues persuaded me to go to today. I went, and that was so amazing. Do that tomorrow if you survive a party or anything. But coffee helps after. But this, it is worth it, definitely. If you want to swim, you have to make a relation of power. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Postgres. Yeah. So, uh, the second question, uh, who of you already uses uh, use, uh, PyCharm? Uh, almost everybody. That is so nice. So I will try to focus on tips that are maybe a bit more advanced and unexpected. And my goal for today is, uh, like, everybody knows at least one new thing in PyCharm. Uh, also, I did some kind of that talk a uh, couple of months ago, three maybe months ago, uh, at uh, PyCon Italy. Uh, anybody listen to that talk at PyCon Italy or? Okay, one person. There won't be many new things. Uh, there will be maybe three, three, four uh, things that I added, but mostly it is almost the same, same talk. But we'll see. So the, the first thing that I want to show is uh, the thing that I didn't mention. Uh, in Florence is the new kind of product of JetBrains that ties together all other products that's called uh, Toolbox app. Anybody knows about that? Who knows? Uh, nobody knows. Great. So <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so easy. Toolbox app is a, an application that allows you to manage easily the tools and the projects. So you have here two tabs. That's your uh, projects and that's your JetBrains uh, IDEs. And you can update, you can ro roll back updates, you can install new versions and uh, it's very easy to track what versions do you have, and it's very easy to launch things from here. For example, you have for different projects, you can have uh, different configurations. Uh, for some projects, you can use EP, EPs. Uh, by the way, who of you use EPs, early access uh, builds? Great. Please come to our booth and we'll give you a t shirt. <laughs> Because the people, people who use APs, first, first of all, they get a new features earlier, and then uh, the most important then can help us actually to make those features much better because they uh, submit their feedback earlier, and it's much easier to fix stuff uh, before you release the, the feature because after you can move on to other things. And so I encourage you to, to try uh, APs. Uh, they are pretty usable. So. Uh, Let's start. Here we have a uh, toolbox, and we can launch from here PyCharm. So it's PyCharm community, PyCharm professional. In theory, I could just press and it will open, but I already has, have it opened. That's PyCharm, you know it. And for today's presentation, I will use the project called uh, VMProf. Uh, VMProf is the profiler that was developed by uh, PyPy guys, that initially was Masi Fialkowski. And Anthony Cooney, who, who are there at the conference, you can meet them, and they came up with this profile uh, like two, at, at EuroPython three years ago, I think. And it is very nice a sampling profile. It also it has, uh, it's open source, and it has uh, UI at vmprof.com, which is written in Django, and that's why we'll use it as a, our uh, sample project, because it's not very big and not very small. It's very good to show stuff. It's on GitHub. So what we do in PyCharm to open projects, we go and we can check out directly from version control. So we just press GitHub and uh, clone, but that won't work because internet here is so slow. And I'll open already, already cloned project instead. So what do we do uh, normally when we open a project? So most of the time, first, we, we want to learn what that project is. And we want to, to, to read the code. Uh, and in PyCharm, you, you can, of course, do that file by file. But the 
easiest way to do that is use search. And uh, in PyCharm, for example, you know that it's J Django project, so you can press Command Shift N, and you can type URLs, and you can navigate directly to this file. And you see that uh, PyCharm shows you the list of the files very fast. And why is it so fast? Actually, it's not. It is very fast because we have indexes, and uh, this speed of access to all the files and classes is not free, and you pay for it by indexing. Uh, and people complain about indexing. Why do we have indexing in the big, on, on when PyCharm starts? And uh, so indexing is payment for speed ups later, so you can access your code very fast because of the indexing. So indexing will stay forever. We work constantly on improving the performance, so this cost, this payment decreases every year, every month, we try to optimize them, but still indexing is a good thing. So yeah, and uh, let's return to our urls.py, how do you navigate in PyCharm? You can actually go to, uh, you can read the code, yes, as, as in all editors, but also what you can do, you can press command and click and go to all the functions, ah, no, it's not, it doesn't work. Why it doesn't work? Yeah, I forgot to, to tell you the important thing. It doesn't work because in, interpreter is not configured. And Pasham tells us about that, and we can press this link, and you see that interpreter is not configured, and what, what we do first. Uh, normally, when we open a project, we create a virtual environment. So in Pasham, there is a button for that. You press this uh, option, and you type vmprof server something like that, and you select Python 3. Point, uh, you select Python 3.6, this one. And PyCharm creates a virtual environment for you, and after that you can use it. But what we have now is PyCharm actually tells us, us that dependencies are not installed. How PyCharm knows about that? There, 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 there is a file called requirements.txt in the project, and actually, uh, if PyCharm, PyCharm found it automatically, if PyCharm doesn't find it, you can go manually and set up it here. So you see that requirements.txt is selected, and actually that's the way to change your environment, because sometimes you have different, different setups for testing, for production, and you can select here different requirements, and you just press this button, and here comes one very important and not very obvious tip. So when, when we open this window, it's OS X default file chooser. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good answer, because uh, setup.py is a Python file. We cannot execute it, and uh, you can specify dependencies in a lot of ways in setup.py, and require... No, we use uh, requirements.txt because it's um, like machine-readable format, and it's uh, like... I advise you, if you didn't listen to, I advise you to listen to the keynote of Armin Ronnicher on the first day. He uh, talked on this topic. So, the requirements.txt is a direction in the right, in the right uh, it's a movement in the right direction in Python. So, you have dependencies in a clear, for, specified in a clear formal way, and it's machine readable, it's easy to understand, and setup.py, you can, like, it's Python file. You cannot, you can introspect that, but that won't work in all cases. So, we don't encourage you to write dependencies there. Sorry? We don't support it uh, yet. It's not standard. It's some experiments. As far as I, I know. Does anybody have a question about uh, this? No, so let's proceed. I wanted to show, like, uh, uh, are there here OS X users who uses Mac OS X? 
Yeah, this tip is for you. Uh, this is like if you want to choose a file in PyCharm and you see this screen, it's a default uh, file chooser and it's not very convenient. It doesn't, it's, it's just, just bad. So what you can do in PyCharm, you can actually use the feature called uh, registry. It's a set of hidden settings, uh, more like system settings. And you can open them and you can see there are a lot of a lot of settings and one of them is mark file chooser native and we disable that. And after that we return to our file chooser and you have here much nicer UI. You can navigate to your project route, to your home directory, and you have uh, auto completion here, and it's so nicer. But we'll leave it as it is, so we select production txt. And you see PyCharm now understands your project when the interpreter is selected, it highlights this as red, and you can install requirements. We won't do that again because internet won't allow us to do that. Instead, we take already configured virtual environment. Yeah, and after we configure that, we can navigate to all our classes and modules and we can do whatever we want with that. And um, there are several, several actions I showed, showed already go to file. It's common shift n. By the way, you can see this hint in the uh, bottom of the screen, it, it highlights the shortcuts. Uh, there are several others. For example, uh, command N is go to class, so you can type class and it will show it. You can show actions in the ID, so as I did for registry. And there is a general um, action called search everywhere. It's double shift and you can type uh, whatever you want, and it will show both uh, classes and files, and it show actions as well. So there are a lot of ways to n n navigate through your code. Actually, uh, navigation, that knows everybody, but there is one more thing. For example, you have a lot of models, like, like let's go to some uh, Django, that's Django, there is one more, by the way, it's, short, it's called uh, find symbol. We can go to models. Like you, you can introspect models going one by one using uh, go to definition. That's cool. But there is a better way, which is very not, not obvious. In, in PyCharm Professional, that feature is available in Professional Edition as well as uh, Django Sport in general, you can see the diagram. You can press show diagram pop up and there are several diagrams that you can uh, open and that is for example Django models diagram. So f if you have some unknown Django project you can just open it in a visual way and see how it looks. That, that is much faster than go from file to file and of course that is much faster than just read the code in text editor. Yeah, another way how you can learn about uh, your code is uh, structure. It's, there is a tool window for that. It's called structure window and it shows you the top level definitions uh, in your file. And also there is a uh, structure, file structure, which you can invoke with a shortcut. And here you can also navigate very easily. It shows you top level definitions with, uh, for classes it shows also fields. So it's, it can be very handy. When you're, you are somewhere in the code, deep in the code and you want to see where, where you are, what is the context uh, outside of the file, you want to go fast to your f f file uh, structure, you, there is a shortcut for that. It's very handy, I use it all the time. It's uh, Alt F1. Uh, and you can navig uh, navigate to the project view by our center and you see where you are. And there is one more thing, you can get, go even further. There is a setting which is not on by default and not very many people know about that. You can 
enable auto scroll from source here in the in this tree. You enable that, and then uh, wherever you are, the file tree is updated and synchronized with your editor. So the active tab in the editor uh, is shown as it's selected in the file tree. Speaking about the file tree, uh, uh, project, project file tree, as all other trees in, uh, in PyCharm and all other IDEs are searchable. And that's also not what all people, not everybody knows. You, for example, uh, if you have a focus in the tree, you can start, just start typing. You can type apps, and you see that uh, the focus moved to the apps.py, and also after that, you can press up and down. For example, we, we press down and we iterate through the highlighted items. That is very handy and that, that works for all the trees. For example, the same thing works in the debugger. When you have your variables, you can start typing there. If you need to, um, if you're looking for some variable or even for some value, you can start typing and it will navigate in the variables view in the debugger. Right, so yeah, uh, some, sometimes people say that like, uh, yeah, I, I uh, said the word tabs and that, that remind me that uh, like sometimes people say that PyCharm is like a bit complicated in comparison with uh, text editors. And when you, try, uh, when you start to ask why, uh, people say that oh, there, are, there are a lot of things, like you have tool windows, you have tabs, you have like it's bars, buttons, and actually what you can do in PyCharm and what a lot of people do uh, is you just can remove it, that all, and I will show you step by step how you do that. For example, nobody needs those buttons, if you, if especially, especially when you use shortcuts. You, you might be using those to, to run things and these to select run configuration, but you can do that with shortcuts, so you just, uh, just press this, no, that's not what I missed. This toolbar, and it's gone, right? So here you have rather convenient navigation bar. You can select here uh, directories, and you can go to the files. But actually, it duplicates um, what you have here. So you can remove it as well. Navigation bar, you press here, and it's gone. But if still, if you need that, you can invoke it by the shortcut, which I don't remember. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit hard. It's on OS X, so, but you, you have a shortcut. And you can do everything you want from here. You can navigate and even you can create file, files from here, just in the editor. So I, I think this is much better than having the navigation bar on the top. What we do next? Of course, we don't need all those tools, like da data view, we don't use it for now, and we can, like, press in here, we can remove that. Tabs. Tabs are uh, informative, but some people say that uh, they eat too much space, and we can configure that as well. So we go pro type tabs here, and we have here the main setting is placement, and placement can be it can be top, can be left, can be bottom, can be right, and like it can be none. <laughs> so we move tabs to def null, and we don't have tabs. And uh, you see here we have like minimized version of PyCharm that actually looks like sublime text or any editor that doesn't look complicated. It's, it looks very light. And we can go even further, and we can enter distraction free mode, the special mode that actually automatically removes everything. So yeah, it looks like that. It, it remo removes the project window and it removes the left gutter, but I don't like it uh, myself because uh, it removes gutter and you don't see breakpoints here when you debug it. I don't know whether you see it here, but breakpoints highlighted as pink line, and it's not very visible, it's not very convenient for me. So I don't use destruction-free mode. Uh, 
I just remove everything by by myself, and if you don't need project, you can you can collapse it, and you can go there only when you when you need that. So how do you navigate between your files when you don't have tabs when everything is collapsed? One uh, the, the the most frequent used um, action is recent files. So it's command E, and here for, from this uh, pop-up window, you can navigate to the recent files, and also you can navigate to the two windows. For example, if you switch between two files, you can just do like that. You can you can you press Command E, and you go to rotors, and you press Command E, you go to models, and you don't need to m touch your mouse and move it to the first tab. Then edit something, then touch it again, move to the second tab. So it's much faster. Uh, another thing is uh, you can actually go back and forth with a shortcut. So it's, uh, there is a shortcut command alt left and command alt right. And uh, for example, you went somewhere, you edited something, and you, you want to return back. And so what is back is a different story, but you know that you want to go back, like in browser, so you can press alt command left, and you actually go back. Uh, but it's not, not, it tracks not only files, but also positions and files. So if you edit it some place in, in, in one big file and you go to the another place, it will return to you inside one file as well. But it's also very handy. As I told you, um, go to file is a perfect way to navigate. So you don't need any tabs. So you just, if you, if you remember the names, you just type and you go. Right, so, yeah, okay, so what do we do? I want to check whether I forgot something to show you. Do you have any questions, by the way, about navigation or maybe, maybe you know some tip that I forgot to, to show. By the way, I, I don't uh, know all the IntelliJ platform. I developed PyCharm for seven years already. But IntelliJ Platform has so many features, and uh, all the features it has, um, first of all, a lot of features I don't know at all. I don't know that they exist, and I learn all the time something new. And, and I learn, I think I learn slower than they are being developed. Uh, and there are some features that I know that exist, but I don't use them. And I think that happens always with new tools, with new features that people uh, like they know that something exists, but they don't, uh, they don't have time uh, to invest to learn something, and they think, okay, I will do the old way because I'm quite efficient doing the old way. Uh, but it happened with me a lot of times with IntelliJ, then I l learned some new way, some new feature, and you spend some time learning the new way, and then you understand that the old way was just so cumbersome, so time consuming, and you start doing s something new, and it's very, Efficient, so I encourage you to learn. Not especially, uh, of course, PyCharm because you already use PyCharm, but it's, it, it applies to all the all the tools and just learn new things. Yeah, that's advice for myself. One yeah. Summary of shortcuts. Yeah, we have actually. If you go to help, you have here key map reference. You. Oops. Yeah, that was something I printed for my daughter. <laughs> uh, uh, and you have here the nice p PDF uh, that is um, that contains all the shortcut for your operation system. Also, at the conferences we have printed uh, key maps, but I don't think we have now nothing left. Yeah, very nice thing. If you, yeah, it's it's so good. Uh, I will show you it. If if you still use tabs, I know it's not the right preferences. If you still use tabs, let's enable them. You have several tabs, right? And you want to like to close them. In PyCharm, you can easily close everything by shift click. So you just you don't need to target uh, this little 
cross, so you just uh, you just press shift and you click, and pre shift and click, and you can close everything by that. Shift click, close everything. It's a very, very nice tip. It saves time. So you don't need to hunt the pixels. Yeah, all right. Let's write some code. So we read through the project. We know something about that, uh, about the project, and we need, now we want to add some lines of code, and we start doing test driven development. We start by adding some tests. So we go and write something, and you see that, uh, like, it's not a good example here. You see that PyCharm com completes the all the syntax that actually you don't need to type, that is obvious by charm types for you. But this m makes the life more difficult for some people because by charm complete itself and it closed the brace and added the, the semicolon. But what do, you know, what do you do now from that? What, how, how, how do you proceed? Does anybody know how do you proceed from this um, point? The, the fastest way how you to start writing the implementation of the test function. Yes. Yes. It's shift enter. Actually, not everybody knows that. So uh, you, you can like press down, but then you go to the beginning of the line, or you can go left, left, enter. That works, of course, but shift enter much faster. And we type something like that, self. Uh, and from here, you can actually invoke documentation, pressing. Control J, you can view documentation just from the completion. So, for example, you take the, an object and you want to invoke a method and you want to read the documentation. You just make what can do that from from here. You can like do that and read, and you actually can start uh, exploring the library from here. Like you can, it's like a browser. It's very handy. Yeah, and you. Also, what you can do, no, no, okay, no, I, it's, I won't show that. You, you can actually, what you can do is you can, I don't remember the shortcut, unfortunately, you can uh, show the definition as well. So right from here, for example, if you don't have a documentation, if you use some of your library that doesn't have a documentation, you can uh, show definition right from here, from the completion, and you can like see how it is implemented to know what to execute. That is very handy as well, so it saves a lot of, saves, can save a lot of time. All right, but we know what we want to execute, so we execute that, but we don't know what to enter, and PyCharm shows you the arguments. If it doesn't show you, you can invoke parameter info with command P, and yeah, and you see that PyCharm also highlights you if argument is missing, but I guess you know all that. So we write our test like that, and we can run it, right? It's by test. We just press run. It fails. Yeah, now we want to fix it, and we want to work with some code. How do we do that? There are two hints that, can, that might be useful. The first one, you write test, you write code, you write test, you write code. What you can do, you can split the screen and to have uh, and split, split vertically. You can split the screen, and from here you can go, and you, for example, you can edit your code, you can edit your test, and work in, like, you know that, I guess. Uh, and another thing that uh, I bet you don't know is you don't need actually to run your tests all the time. You don't need to click this button. You don't need to press the shortcut. You can actually enable the thing that's called uh, toggle auto test. You see the tooltip, and you press this button, and uh, after you change something, PyCharm automatically restarts tests, and you see now they pass, so it also can save time. So it runs all your tests for you. Okay. 
um, you probably see this green stripe on the left. That's the version control integration. But first, I close that. That's version control integration, and uh, yes, PyCharm has uh, a lot of uh, supports, a lot of version con control systems, and we use G Git ourselves in JetBrains, so I would say that we have pretty decent Git support. And what you can do, you can create new branches, uh, new test, something like that. You can create new branch, and you can commit. And of course, you can do all that with a shortcut. You can write new test, edit, new test. And you commit that. I bet you know that all. What I want to show is not very obvious. Who uses um, Cherry Peak working with Git? Yeah, there is a very good tip that I'll show. First of all, you probably know that there is a version control tool window which shows you all a version file, also shows git log. And from git log, you can do the following. For example, you can switch to the master branch. And here, you can see all other branches. And we select new test, the branch that we just created. And there is a button which is called uh, highlight non-picked commits. Basically, it compares to branches. It compares the branch you selected here with uh, your current branch which, which you are working on. And you press that, and it grays out all the commits that are absent from your current branch. And it's so convenient when you, you want to see what was added to the branch and absent uh, in another branch and move some commits. It's very convenient. And from here, you, you just select those. This is, um, this is highlighted as bold because it might commit commits. It highlights uh, m all my commits as bold. By the way, I think I can, I can disable that. But you see that those are gray. This is not. And from here, I can press this button, cherry pick, and it will cherry pick right from here. You don't need, you don't need touch terminal at all. It's very cool. My, my favorite feature in, in version control. No, that is unfortunately not supported, but it will. There is a long-standing feature request, and for some reason, our developers of uh, version control integration, uh, they were against this feature for some, I don't know why, but now they're convinced and they're working on that. All right. What you can do, actually, you can, yeah, you can easily roll back changes, but you, you've seen that. For example, you have some, some change here, and you can uh, roll back it from here, and uh, you don't, and you can see the difference right in place. You don't need to, to see the difference. Um, for all file. Yeah, about uh, the differences, there is one feature which people don't know, but it's very cool. Unfortunately, I don't know how to demonstrate it very well. Is uh, com compare, com compare files, compare directory. You can compare everything. For example, you can select a folder and press option uh, command D or compare with, and you can select, I don't know, it's, you can select another folder. Like, and it will come, of course, that's not very, uh, because of those are two different folders, but uh, I think you see the, the idea that it compares file by file, and it can actually, if th there are pictures, it shows you the pictures. So this is uh, the best way I know to compare two different contents in file system which are slightly different and you want to see what is different and maybe merge something to move some changes around. Uh, that's the best way I know. Right, so, yeah. A lot of features, yeah, I even don't know. So, uh, the main thing that is so useful when you edit code is uh, code inspections. These inspections are some checks that are executed on your file. 
and they highlight some errors or the ways to optimize your code. And here we have, uh, they are marked at the right scroll bar and you can see them right here on the scroll bar. You can move slowly the mouse and you can see the scroll lens. You, you can see all the warnings right in the editor. And yeah, what we see is that here in this project is uh, there are a lot of viol violations of Web 8 and we fix it with, uh, how, how do we fix it? What's the name of the action? Anybody knows? Refactoring, not exactly. Yeah, reformat code. There are two ways of uh, doing something with the code. One is refactoring and one is, uh, it's, it's located here. It actually, it's some complex operations on your code. When you rename something, when you move something, when you need to, to check, with, when you do something with the like, code, some object, some code object, and you need to check that all the references to it also updated, it's refactoring. When you're working with just, with code as with text, that is like, code operations, and there are a lot of them as well, and one of them is reformat code, it's command alt L, and you see that PyCharm um, makes the code uh, compatible with PEP8. Also, the, we see that the, here we have uh, unused imports, and we have an action for that, it's called uh, optimize imports. Yeah, now it looks, it looks much better. And, if we scroll down, what, what is here? We have here some typos checked. If we want, we can add those words to the dictionary. We see here that methods are not implemented. Yeah, I think it's nothing interesting to fix. But actually, yeah, we, we, we touched uh, keyboard twice and we did a lot, uh, we did, uh, as Paul Everett uh, called it yesterday at uh, uh, PyCharm debugging tutorial, like the janitor work that the IDE actually does. It's a, I, I like this analogy. It's like the IDE does for you the janitor work. You don't need to touch your imports. You don't need to insert lines and move your methods. You just press some shortcuts. In a, in a second, you have the very good code style. Right. Yeah, and of course, that all works for JavaScript. For example, if we go to JavaScript file, we see here that those lines are not terminated with semicolon. It's a question whether we should or not, but if we want, if we don't want, we can express, we can disable this inspection. If we want, we can just terminate, and uh, we can terminate statement, we can terminate the file, but what ca we can do also, and that we can do for all inspections, we can select the uh, folder or project, and we can call the action called uh, inspection by name, run inspection by name, and ter and terminated statement and we can do that for directory, for example. And you see that PyCharm finds 494 unterminated statements, and actually we can fix that right from here. We can press Alt-Enter and terminate all statements, so in all projects, all statements will be terminated. And that, that is valid for all inspections, so you can apply those quick fixes, and if you don't know about that quick fix is some uh, transformation of your code that you can invoke uh, manually. Uh, it normally, it is invoked by Alt-Enter. So in, in a lot of places in your code, you can just press Alt-Enter and see what PyCharm offer. uh, offers. PyCharm can offer you to, to, to make the code better, sometimes. Yeah, but we won't do that to save some time. Right, so yeah, uh, we have Django project. Maybe we should try to, who does Django by the way? 
like a, a third or maybe 25 percent. For Django, of course, you know that uh, the, there are run configurations to run Django tests uh, and Django server. Um, let's see that. This is the, everybody knows what, what, what is run configuration. Who, who doesn't know what is run configuration? Okay, a run configuration is uh, the way how to run something. So there are predefined types of run configurations, uh, and, uh, and in many, many cases they are created automatically. Some, when they are not, you can create them by pressing and selecting. For example, you can, there are run configurations to debug JavaScript in browsers, to run some JavaScript tools for Python tests, for, like, for a lot of stuff. And of course, there, is a run, there are run configurations for Django, and the, the one that we'll try is Django server. And let's run it. Just press this green triangle, and let's go here. And it doesn't work because we don't have database, and uh, when we don't have database, what should we do? we should run uh, migrate task. How do we do that in PyCharm? Does anybody know? Any ideas how to, the best way to run uh, the Django, Django commands, manage Py commands? So yeah, that's right, Django, actually you can, if you don't know, you just search Django, manage Py, manage Py, Run ManagePy task, right? And there is a special console for running ManagePy commands. And uh, how it is better than terminal? It's better because it shows you um, help and it shows you expected arguments. So if you don't know what command does, still you can use this console and you don't go to Django documentation, which is great. But right here, you can it, uh, the console reminds you what, what it expects. So we run migrate. And also what we need to do is we want to populate this with data. And for that, we start, uh, we run VMProf from the terminal. And uh, as you see, PyCharm has terminal and the nice, how it is better than an external terminal. One thing is, for example, here you have virtual environment already activated. So you just open the terminal, you have already activated virtual environment for, for the project you are using now. Um, no, it's, okay, let's type, type that. So that's how we run from the terminal VMProf profiler and it uploads the snapshot to our local instance that we launched. And now I guess after the restart we have the data, yes. And we can look here that our website works. But also, for example, we want to see the actual data. So we want to go inside the database to see what data is located in the database. How do we do that in PyCharm? The best way, like we go to settings.py. Uh, uh, oh no, it's not settings. Yeah, so let me check that. Manage.py. Web up settings. No? Find it for some reason. Ah, because yeah, because it's not file. Yeah, it's not file. All right. And how to, by the way, how to find it if it's not file? So we did type. Yeah, that's the way. That's not. I, I would say that is a failure of our UX. That's uh, why I didn't find it. But also, you can count it as a tip. For example, if you look for a folder, in uh, and in, in go navigate to file, pop up you need to type 
the selection then. <laughs> I, I, I know that it, it's strange. But that's how it works now. I hope we'll change that. So yeah, uh, what we do, I already forgot why, what, what I wanted to do. I wanted, yeah, we go to databases and we see that it's SQLite, right? We, uh, SQLite, we navigate here. And from here, we press as data source. Okay. Okay. No. And you see that it's added to the data sources. And you can actually see the tables and uh, CPU profile. You can see our entry that we just created from the terminal. And also you have a SQL console right in the PyCharm. And you can write uh, from, and he here you have also code completion, VMProf, CPU profile. Right. And you have here history of your queries, and so can be a pretty convenient way to, to work with databases. And based on this functionality, actually, JetBrains has a separate product called DataGrip. It's, it doesn't support any programming languages. It's focused on the databases. And it is included in the PyCharm Professional Edition. OK. So we have some time. Yeah, and I want to show you the thing, two things, right? But in the end, like I showed two things. There are, as you know, there are two uh, problems uh, in, in software engineering, like cache invalidations and naming things. I would like to show you how we solve, you solve that in PyCharm. For cache invalidations, and the, that counts as the first tip that I want to show. Uh, sometimes PyCharm uh, can uh, sh uh, highlight some imports as red for no particular reason, and that is the first problem, cache invalidation. So it means that we ca could not invalidate caches, and there is an uh, action called uh, invalidate cache and restart. Mm -hmm. So you might try that, but it happens very rarely, but Sometimes it is still useful because I have uh, on Stack Overflow I uh, once answered uh, that question. PyCharm highlights something as red. What do I do? I, I answer like invalidate caches, and I still get like karma for that answer. So that's why I'm talking about it. That might be helpful, but that's rare. It's a rare case. Normally it works. The, the second thing is naming things, right? So you want to write some code, and you like some few lines of uh, Python code. And you don't want to create a project. You don't want to create a file. What do you do? What, do you know what, what is the way to do it in PyCharm? Except console. You have Python console, yeah, but it's for one-liners. If you want to write several lines, what do you do? Scratch, exactly. So you f look for scratch, new scratch buffer, buffer or you, uh, yeah, it's a shortcut for that. And you select the language, Python. And you just write your code, and I have here some code. And you can uh, ru run scratch files as they are normal files. And you can do actually like everything. It doesn't do everything. Ah, okay, we need to print. To print, and this is postfix completion that I just shown you. And you can debug from here. That's and. This is another thing that you might not be using right now is debugger in PyCharm, which I claim much better than PDB. Yeah, and yeah, F strings. Let's try F strings. So it works. And duplicate line, remove line. It's yeah, just showing some uh, shortcuts for actions. Yeah, and uh, this code is Python code, right? It's f-strings in Python 3.6. The syntax is highlighted, and you see there is a code completion. But that's not uh, unique only for f-strings. Actually, that uh, universal uh, machinery inside IntelliJ products is called language injection, and I, I will show you how to use it. 
it can be used for all languages. For example, you can write something like regex. You can write something, I don't know, and inject language reference regex and it's highlighted or you can SQL from table it's already detected it's injected it on its own or it can be JSON Python 2017 inject JSON. Yeah, of course. Uh, let me try. Uh, I don't remember the shortcuts around with. No. Surround. That's a good question, by the way. Let me th Does anybody know how, how to do that the best way? To. Huh? No. It will. Okay, let's search for that. Surround selection type and port on brace. Yeah. Uh, I I learned something new today. That's great. Yeah, and braces as well. No. Yeah, and braces as well. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. So yeah, do we have any time or how how, how much time do we have? No, we don't have, it's two minutes. Okay, then we are, we are done. Uh, thank you very much. I tried to show as, as much as I could. Thank you, Dimitri. Are there any more questions? Uh, hi there, thanks for the presentation. Um, I was wondering if it's possible to make PyCharm consume coverage reports that were generated externally, because the, I know you can run with coverage from within PyCharm, but I have the coverage report already for my continuous integration for Jenkins or Travis, and I want PyCharm just to use those ones rather than generate its own. Yeah, in PyCharm you can generate the external coverage report, but you want to use the already generated coverage report to highlight in the editor. Yes, I want the externally generated coverage to appear in the PyCharm gutter. There is, uh, for coverage, there is action to open, but I guess that's for internal, like, serialization format, so it won't work for coverage of Py. And I know that we have feature requests for that, and we, at some point, we fix that. It's counted as a super world. <laughs> okay, another question? Uh, my question is based on a comparison between like suggested code completions in Sublime and in PyCharm. So in PyCharm, it seems to rely on knowledge about local variables and what types they are, perhaps, you know, what methods they contain, and so on. Whereas Sublime, it offers things that you've just typed before anywhere, like within the file, which I find found very useful as well. Is it possible to achieve that in PyCharm? Do you understand what I mean? Or sorry, I. Couldn't Sorry, I need to slow down, perhaps. So, in Sublime, uh, suggested code completions, it, it will, like, if you start typing something, the first few characters of something you've typed before anywhere within that file, it will suggest that as a completion. This doesn't happen in PyCharm. Like, suggested completions are based on, say, knowledge of, like, the local variables within a function, what, what types they are, like, what, what, what methods they might contain. 
Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. That, uh, if I can understand correctly the question, uh, you're saying that in Sublime, when you start typing, it suggests you auto completion for the like words that you used already. In the, yeah, in yeah, exactly. exactly yeah. Does is the it possible same. to do this in my term? Pycharm does the same, but Pycharm, uh, what Pycharm does actually is it understands the semantics of your code and it. Uh, Provides you not only with uh, just random tokens across the file, yeah. but it tries to guess what you want to type. And if you start typing here, it first uh, suggests you variables and functions. Mm -hmm. And but also you can, for example, here we'll try type something. Let's try the name. I think that this thing will be no. Suggested. Um, See, it's not in the namespace, the global namespace, so it doesn't suggest it. Is that correct? Uh, so. Uh, complete. Actually, there are several types of completion in PyCharm. So w when you type, there is a like pop-up completion that. Uh, tries to, uh, that understands the scope and it, uh, it's very fast and shows what is the scope. There is also uh, completion, let me find an action for that. Complete, completion, class name completion. That actually is a bit slower, but that goes out of the scope and uh, okay. it, uh, um, proposes you all the name that it has in the indexes. So it's not only for classes, it's for modules and classes. So that what probably will help you, if I understand correctly. Yeah, so yeah, that, so that, you that, type that things, somewhat. they are not, if I understand the context, it doesn't provide it because it's the, those names are not in the context. Uh, they are in the outer scope. Then you, uh, you just invoke this uh, class-based com class completion control out space and it, it goes up to the, it goes to the index and go, goes up in the scope in some sense and uh, it provides you with all the names. But also it has semantics, it, 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 it won't provide all the, all the words. There, I, I don't know, I could not invoke that, but uh, I'm sure that we have token-based completion. I will think about that. Thank you for the question. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Here, I think. Hi. Uh, I like PyCharm's linting, but other people in my company use PyLint, and the interaction between those two is a bit, it's very hard to synchronize them. Uh, is there a good way of doing that, or will there be? Uh, could you please repeat? Sorry, too fast. Yeah. I like the linting that PyCharm has, and how it displays the linting errors, uh, but other people in my company use PyLint and... But, but what is PyDev? Sorry? What they use, you said... What, I I, uh, other, other people use PyLint. Uh, like, I don't hear the name, unfortunately. I don't know. Maybe it sounds so, like maybe sorry. Maybe just stand <laughs> Not Flake 8, but PyLint. So, PyLint. <laughs> PyLint. Wow. Sorry. Okay, PyLint, yeah. Uh, so obviously you can run PyLint from inside PyCharm, but it doesn't integrate the output it gives. It doesn't display it on the file. Is there any way of doing that, or might there be? You want to run PyLint from PyCharm, right? Yeah, I'd like to be able to yeah, use Yeah, you can do that uh, in some sense by using external, external tools. Right, but then the output from PyLint is just yeah, is, is not it, in line. It will show the output in the tool window, if you want to, it to be shown as a pep aid, for example, in the editor, yeah. it's not implemented yet, but we know about that and we want to fix that. Maybe this year, I think. Cool. Okay, and unfortunately, we are out of time. So if you want to learn more about PyCharm, please visit Dimitri at PyCharm booth. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you very much. <laughs>